Hello, everyone. So just a little um, FYI for you. Uh, our two Heritage videos for this month, for October, will be back-to-back. -back because I had a plan for um, the video for today, but the photos didn't come in time, so we're going to have to kind of flip-flop them around. Uh, but definitely check out next week's Heritage video because there's going to be a lot of extra information in that one. So I ha the photo I'm going to scrapbook today is this photo. This is a photo of my grandmother from 1933. And I just want to show you uh, one of the things that that is really a positive about being able to digitize, high quality digitize our heritage photos. And here is what I want to show you. So here is the original of this photo and you can see how small it is. It is tiny. Um, in this particular instance that is because my grandfather, uh, my great grandfather was a photographer and uh, so he, when he took the photos, he they were very very small because he actually would like, um, he had a dark room and he would do all of that at home. Um, and for whatever reason, I'm not sure of the history there as to why that was, but he, or why they were so small when he developed them, but they were very small. So, uh, what happened was I very, because these are all buffered pages, this is all archival safe supplies, so I removed the page protector from this. I used my iPhone 8. I have an iPhone 8 Plus is my phone, is my thing, is my camera. I went into some really good lighting, outside natural lighting, and I snapped the photos in as close as I could. And I got really good, good results that way. So what that allowed me to do was to take this photo that was rather small and turn it then into this photo where you still get all the detail in the background um, and all the detail from the photo. And you could, if you wanted it closer to this tone, you could take it into Photoshop and tone it more that way too. I kind of liked it better this way. And again, since it's digitized, you can go in and change it however you want it. So that's the photo we're going to be working with. And we're going to see some of these other photos in coming scrapbook, um, in coming heritage albums because I've, um, I've digitized a couple of more of these photos to be able to scrapbook uh, again. So. so I thought it might be fun to use a cut file for this particular photo. Um, I really like this one and I really like how it kind of mixed the flowers and the grasses that are um, behind my grandmother. I just like the organic look of this one. Uh, so I said I'm going to use the cut file and I think I'm going to go with a, I'm not 100% sure on product yet, but by the time I come back and start to like voice over this, I'll have done the product. But I'm going to go off camera, I'm going to pick out some product and I'm going to back this cut file before I come back in and then we'll put this layout together. Okay, so. I went ahead and chose uh, one of my Secret Not Secret Kit Clubs from last year. I think it features Minte Paper, the Bird Song Collection. And so I have the 6x6 six six paper pad and some 12x12 12 12 papers. And I'm going to go ahead and use that uh, to go with, to use with my photo here. And uh, I'm going to start off by picking my background paper. I'm going to use a wood grain background because I just think it's beautiful. I think it's set off my photo really, really well. So I'm just kind of off to the side here <laughs> cutting off the branding strip. And then I'm also going to go ahead and cut six inches of this beautiful vellum. So this vellum was part of the kit that Christina put together for me and it is from Heidi Swap. I'm just going to go ahead and give this beautiful vellum a torn edge just to add some texture and some interest. And then I'm going to go ahead and give my photo a border using this nice minty colored paper. 
so when I print photos from home, or if I print photos from Persnickety Prints, which is the only two places I print from, I always give my photos a white border. What this does is it allows me to then go ahead, make that white border a little bit smaller, and I also have the ability to take a six by six paper pad and use it to mat a photo fairly easily. And so that's what I'm gonna do here. So while this photo started out as a four by six, um, it does end up with qu quite a wide white border that you can just trim down a little bit. So this is how I'm gonna set the, that cut file up. I'm going to put the adhere the cut file to my piece of vellum and then put all of that, the vellum and with the cut file on top onto my paper. And I love that little bit of extra gold detail that the vellum adds to that. So I know I want to use my title. I know I want my title to be Hello Summer because I know that um, this was a beach picture. My grandmother's wearing a bathing suit. So I, I am going to go with it's definitely summertime. <laughs> I'm going to kind of fidget with this title just a little bit because I want the title to kind of snuggle in there next to my photo. Uh, I wasn't sure I wanted to kind of cover up so much of the cut file, but in the end, that's where it looked the best, so that's where I'm going to place it. I'm going to go ahead and add a little cluster to either side of my page. I want to pull in a little bit more color. There's so much color at the bottom, and I want to pull some of that up around my photo to make it cohesive, and I'm going to do that by using some gold foil die cuts that were in my kit and some strips of off-cut papers that I had just kind of seen there. They're just scraps from doing the cut file. And then I decide that I want to add a tag up at the top there. So I really like this tag. It's a cut apart tag. I don't really want the bird but I kind of want the floral image and um, I love the look of an upside down tag up in a corner. I just think it looks really, really nice. So I'm gonna go ahead and quickly and easy fussy cut this tag out and then I'm going to give it a punch so it looks like a tag. And then I'm gonna take some of that beautiful bakery twine that is aged and looks so pretty and I'm gonna put some of that through the hole and just tie it up and put it down just like that and I'm setting it in such a way that I'm going to cut up cut the bird off when I'm finished. So now that my tag has its baker's twine and all that in it I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to it's not baker's twine it's like pastry string I think that's what it's called uh, anyway, I am going to go ahead and place it right here down at the top. And I also used some more of those scraps from the cut file to put a little bit of a grounding, just some strips of paper up there under the tag. Now, I really want to put the year this photo was taken, which I do have. I do know what year this photo was taken. I want to put the year that photo was taken onto my layout somewhere. So I've just gone under my table here where my little 31 tote bag goes that stores all of my uh, thickers and I'm going to pick out these thickers. Uh, I think these are from the Hazelwood collection from One, to New one Canoe 2 so they're quite an, a couple years old. Uh, they were one of my favorite fonts and I have um, them in all the different colors. Uh, so next up, I want to add some fun details to my cut file. I'm going to do that two ways. First of all, I'm going to take these beautiful Prima gems. Now these gems are quite large. They're the largest on the pack, and I think that the large ones are really hard to use. But for this particular application, they worked really well because they fit just perfectly in those little flowers in the centers. And now um, I've just rolled my chair over to the side and I'm going to grab some Nouveau Drops and I'm going to add some Nouveau Drop details to this cut file too. And I get really into my Nouveau Drops. I get my head right down over there because otherwise you're just not sure if it's going to work or not. Um, so if you're interested in the colors I'm using, I am using the Stone Drops in Gold Rush and I am using Vintage Drops 
in Dusty Rose. And I am just, there are already these little um, circle details on the cut file. So I'm just enhancing what is already there, what's already in the design of my cut file by just adding these little Nouveau drops to the edge of the cut file, right over the little white dots. And then I am a tapper, so when I do my Nouveau drops, I practice them on a sheet of post-it tape, which you can, post-it note, which you can see right next to me. And then I go ahead and once I have them flowing really good on the post-it note, I go ahead and do my new drops where I want. And I find that picking up your page and just flicking underneath it does wonders for that like Hershey Kiss thing that you sometimes get. And so that's going to complete my layout. Here are all of the beautiful close-ups. You can see the Nouveau Drop details. And thank you so much for joining me today for this Heritage video. I will see you next week with a new one. Bye!